good morning everyone welcome back now we will move on to part 2 of the filarial worms in the last class if people have heard to the most important filarial worm causing human infection that is Bukharia bancrofti now I will deal with the other filarial worms of human importance yes the other important filarial worm which is of human importance or causes disease in humans is the Brugia malai. Brugia malai is seen in tropical and subtropical countries. In India it is very common along the coastline in states of Kerala, Assam, Orissa, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal and here also the adult worms that is the male and female adult worms reside in the lymphatic system similar to the adult worms of Wuchereria bancrofti. Coming to morphology, morphologically here also the males and females are separate, adult females again around 8 to 10 centimeters like Wuchereria and males are shorter around 4 centimeters. Both the adult males and females appear transparent white thread like uh, worms which are present in lymphatic vessels or the lymph nodes. The Brugia malai, the tail end in the microfilaria very classically shows two distinct nuclei. You people now may remember that the uh, microfilaria of Wuchereria had a hyaline sheath and the nuclei which were scattered like the granules. The tip and tail tip was empty in Wuchereria bancrofti whereas in Brugia malai very clearly two distinct nuclei can be seen in the tail tip. Yes, the microfilaria is similar to the microfilaria of Ucararia bancrofti. Again, it also has a hyaline sheath uh, and it has smooth curves. The cephalic space is longer. It has two important nuclei in the tail tip. That is, tail tip is not empty like the uh, microfilaria of Ucararia bancrofti. Coming to the life cycle, the life cycle again is completed in two hosts, definitive host being the human and the intermediate host being the mosquitoes belonging to the genus Mansonia. In Wuchereria it was Culex oriadis, in uh, Brugia malai it is a genus Mansonia, mosquitoes belonging to the genus Mansonia. The infective stage again here is the L3 larva, L3 larva uh, is uh, um, passed to the humans through the mosquito bite. Yeah. Once the mosquito comes for the blood meal, it releases or uh, deposits the L3 larva. These L3 larva grow into adults in the lymphatics of the humans. Then once the mating occurs and the female starts laying the um, eggs with the embryos, that is the microfilaria are released immediately, they again go into the circulation, they escape into the general circulation to be uh, picked up by the mosquito for its life cycle to continue. Once the mosquito picks the microfilaria, it, uh, the microfilaria shed their sheaths and penetrate into the midgut and migrate to the thoracic muscles where the microfilaria becomes a resting short stubby L1 larva which takes around 2 weeks. Then after around 2 weeks it molds into L2 larva which is longer than the L1 and further it grows into its length leading to L3 larva which is the infective form of filariasis. So that is how the life cycle continues. Now coming to pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is again similar to our uh, lymphatic filariasis that is lymphangitis, lymphadenitis and um, uh, lymphatic obstruction and elephantiasis. So similarly the uh, Brugia malai also causes lymphatic filariasis. Diagnosis depends on the demonstration of microfilaria in the general circulation or the peripheral blood and adult worms, sections of lymph nodes uh, or the soft tissue of the lymphatics showing adult worms is the method to diagnose. Treatment again is dithyl carbamazine or hetrazan what it is called, hetrazan is uh, it kills microfilaria and control major prophylaxis is again health education, prevention of uh, breeding of mosquitoes and 
using mosquito nets or prevention of the mosquito bite. Then coming to other these filariasis which uh, filarial worms which can also cause subcutaneous filariasis that is loa loa, onchocerca volvulus and mansonella, mansonella ozardi, mansonella perstans and mansonella streptocerca all of these filarial worms can cause subcutaneous filariasis not the lymphatic filariasis. So, the lymphatic filariasis is mainly caused by Ucraria bancrofti and Brugia malai. The other filarial worms like Loa Loa, Onchocerca volvulus and Monsonella species like Monsonella streptocerca, Monsonella ozardi and Monsonella uh, perstans they can cause subcutaneous filariasis. Coming to Loa Loa, Loa Loa causes the subcutaneous filariasis called as the African eye worm. This loa loa is also called as the African eye worm because it causes subcutaneous filariasis mainly seen in Central and West Africa. The adult worms are seen in the subconnect, uh, subcutaneous tissues of humans mainly around the eye in the conjunctiva. Morphologically, adult worms are there both male and female separate but they are smaller when compared to the Eucraria or the Brugia malai. See the adult female is around 6 cm whereas that of the uh, lymphatic filarial worms it was around 10 and the male there was 4 here it is 3 cm. So, they are slightly smaller the adult worms are slightly smaller than the adult filarial worms which cause lymphatic filariasis. So, and the lifespan there also is around 10 years here it is slightly more around 15 years. The microfilaria will look like that. The vector or the intermediate host is the chrysopes unlike mosquitoes for lymphatic filariasis. This is a chrysope, it is a small insect which appears like a house fly, it is called as chrysopes which can transmit loa loa. Once the chrysopes or the fly bites the humans for its blood meal then in the blood the uh, life cycle remember one thing more or less remains same in the blood they uh, grow into adults the, here the adults uh, release the microfilaria they remain in the subcutaneous tissue around the conjunctiva and they release microfilaria microfilaria are seen escaping into the uh, general circulation and from the microfilaria it becomes L1 larva then molds into L2 and L3 larva and again L3 larva has to be picked up by the fly that is belonging to the genus Chrysopes okay, for its life cycle to be completed. The disease is called as loasis, loasis. The conjunctiva will have the, can you see here? In the conjunctiva, we can see a large worm, very clearly seen. It is a adult worm. Very, uh, we can see sometimes swellings around the eye called as calabar swellings, which are due to the adult worm. The lymph nodes, lymphatics around the eye get swollen. It is, they are called as um, calabar swellings. Sometimes there may be urticaria or pruritus, itching of the eye, intense itching and the peripheral blood shows eosinophilia. Yeah, look at that, the upper eyelid, it shows a swelling, right? That is calabar swelling. Yeah, this is also a calabar swelling. In the blood, the microfilaria has to be seen. Treatment remains heterazan or dithyl carbamazine and personal protection against the pr protection from the bite of these insects like chrysopes. Onchocerca volvulus. Onchocerca volvulus is also called as Onchocerca cacutins and it was called as American blinding filaria because it leads to blindness. Again seen in Africa and America. Adult worms are present in the subcutaneous tissues of eye around the eye. Look at that large number of adult worms in the lymph node it is seen. Morphologically the adult worms will have an well marked annular thickening more prominent in females. Again the male and female are slightly smaller than those causing lymphatic filariasis around 5 cm and 3 cm. Microfilariae they are found in the skin around the eye 
and they are not sheathed. The microfilaria of Ucraria and uh, Brugiamalai were sheathed, whereas here Loa Loa and Oncosarca they are unsheathed and they are non periodic. Anytime they may be present in the skin around the eye. Yeah, this is how the microfilaria will look. Humans are infected by bite of a black fly called as simulium for a blood meal when it bites and they are the, the L3 larvae are deposited in the skin. They escape into the general circulation, become adults and the adults male and female separate, they mate and release the microfilaria which are taken which are present in the uh, general circulation to be picked up by the mosquito, uh, not mosquito, here it is the fly, the black fly. The larvae microfilaria uh, change from the metamorphose from L1 to L3 larva and L3 larva is again infective to humans. They cause onchocerciasis in man which is similar to our calabar swellings, the onchosarcomas, ocular lesions or lesions in subcutaneous tissue. Now here you can see a lesion, a swelling around the knee joint. Such subcutaneous nodules may be seen. Look at that. It is an African patient. Lot of subcutaneous nodules are seen. They are all due to, he does not have a filariasis. But you can see the inguinal lymph nodes are Mm, uh, uh, enlarged and there are a lot of subcutaneous swellings. So, this is due to not due to um, Ucraria but due to other microfilarial, other filarial worms like Oncosarca. Yeah. Again, similar subcutaneous nodules may be seen. Ocular lesions which may be in the form of iridocyclitis, glaucoma, papillitis are seen. Okay. Lab diagnosis, since the microfilaria are present in the skin, not much in the um, peripheral blood, we have to use a skin snipping. It is called as snipping of the skin and see against, uh, you can see the, when you see a slip lamp, do a slit lamp examination, you can see the microfilaria in the aqueous humor. Yeah, this is the microfilaria in snip skin specimen. Treatment remains again the heterazone that is diethyl carbamazine and removal of the nodules, surgical removal of the nodules and prophylaxis. Look at this, the picture on the right side shows you the aqueous humor showing the microfilaria when seen through a slit lamp examination. Prophylaxis remains same that is health education and prevention of stagnation of these stagnation of water to prevent the breeding of these insects like the black fly and prevention of the mosquito or the insect bites. Look at that from the conjunctiva the adult worm is being removed and once the no, no, nodule was excised the subcutaneous cutaneous nodule, a large number of adult worms are present in the nodule. Coming to Mansonella species, Mansonella also called as Dipetalonema and it is not seen in India much, it is seen in uh, parts of Central and South America. Adult worms are again present in the connective tissues. Morphology is similar, here also the adult worms are 6 centimeters and 2 centimeters. Vectors are mosquitoes belong to the genus Culicoides. The disease caused by these is seen in seen as nodules, subcutaneous nodules on the skin and dermatitis with pruritus. Hypopigmented macules may be there, sometimes the regional lymph nodes may be enlarged. Treatment again remains the ethyl carbamazine. Mansonella uzardi and Mansonella parstans again not seen in India, Central and South America leading to uh, they cause subcutaneous nodules, morphology is similar to other Mansonella species, male and female being separate and the microfilariae are not sheathed. These Mansonella uzardi and Perstans also cause lymph node enlargement very rarely hydrocele and they may show they all of these filarial worms exhibit eosinophilia. 
so microfilaria have to be demonstrated in the blood and they are present all throughout the day unlike they don't means they don't exhibit any kind of periodicity neither diurnal or nocturnal they are present in the blood all throughout the day so blood sampling can be done any time and demonstrate the microfilaria for these there is no treatment available because dithelcarbamazine does not work on mansonella perstans and mansonella ozardi okay okay fine mansonella perstans the life cycle remains similar to our uh, other filarial worms mosquito belong to the genus culicoides are the vectors who deposit the l3 larva diagnosis is made by demonstration of microfilaria which are unsheathed and present in the blood okay mebendazole has been of some use mebendazole has been of some use in uh, mansonella perstans and ozardi more than dc dc is the drug of choice for all the microfilarial uh, worms except uh, mansonella ozardi and mansonella perstans that you need to remember for mansonella ozardi and perstans to some extent mebendazole has been helpful yeah, that's how the microfilaria will look so with that we come to end of all the filarial worms so you have studied Ucraria bancrofti, Brugia malai, both of which are very important, causing a very important disease called as elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis. Then you have studied Brugia malai and others causing subcutaneous filariasis. Other important filarial worms that is Loa loa, Onchocerca volvulus, and Mansonella species. So the important questions among in these filarial worms is Ucraria bancrofti. Brugia malai and the uh, Dracunculus medinensis which you will be studying in the following classes. Among the short essays, microfilaria is a common short essay. When you are asked a question like microfilaria which can come as 5 marks or 3 marks question, for a 5 marks I expect you to write uh, the differences between all the microfilaria of different filarial worms, draw a picture and during its life cycle how it molds that is microfilaria released in humans uh, in the general circulation they are present picked up become L1 to L3 then L3 is the infective stage. I want you to draw the diagram for the um, microfilaria of um, Ucraria and Brugia they are sheathed rounded anterior tapering posterior ends the Ucraria microfilaria the tail end is empty whereas Brugia two import two uh, very conspicuous nuclei are present in the tail tip that has to be drawn okay then life cycle of Ucraria is one more five marks question prevention of uh, guinea worm that is Dracunculus among the short answers common questions are difference between Ucraria and Brugia sheathed microfilaria and I want you to draw showing the tail tip okay and naming only just the list of microfilaria found in humans and what is periodicity you should know what is periodicity and which filarial worms exhibit which kind of periodicity whether diurnal or nocturnal loa loa rarely asked as a uh, three marks question sometimes calabar swellings also has been asked as a three marks questions okay just go through this few mcqs yeah so that ends your class on filarial worms. Filarial worms very important may come definitely will come if it has not come as a long question definitely it will come as short note okay. So that ends your class thank you.